Adele, I can see you nodding, uh, uh, nodding there. Uh, would you like to make some comment on that or, or some of the things that David's mentioned? Yeah. Certainly from uh, the day we spent in Wednesday, on Wednesday in Cairns, the notion of the quality aspect of the shopping experience we're providing is um, a hot topic issue for everyone relating to this particular market. But there was also some sobering realities about the fact that roughly half of the market is still coming through these very organized tours with these very restricted caveats about where they can go and can't go, how much time is going to be spent, free time uh, versus prescribed shopping, the relationship and the commissions coming through uh, those retailers. So that's going to take some time to change. And I, I completely echo uh, your feelings about the need to, to step in and, and fix those things very quickly. The challenge that's been added for Australia is we had first mover advantage with the ADS. And we now have the Americans and the Canadians very recently getting ADS and having a taste of what, how the Chinese market can bolster their equally flat domestic markets and their equally uh, aggressive outbound markets. So we've got people who are going to come in without those legacy of relationships and inbound and outbound tour operators with that structure. They're going to come in and create a new structure that's going to be very attractive because we know that this is the one number one dissatisfaction point for Chinese visitors along with food. Um, they're going to come in and impose a new structure right away while Australia is going to be challenged to see this change over multiple years. So we, we do need to not just accept that it's going to take time, but really take an aggressive stance. I'm completely in agreement. Okay, Therese, you. Because there's no rep representative up here, I'd just like to say that Jane Madden spoke about this issue up in Cairns. And um, she articulated the fact that the tourism quality standard, TQOL, which was recently announced by the minister at ATE, uh, they are looking to expand that so that it will include guiding. Now, the decisions are still moving, my understanding is, um, but that's certainly on their agenda and it's certainly uh, one of the, the uh, fast-moving agenda items. So suffice to say that it is on the radar and that there are things that are being, do that are being done at the moment to try and um, work that, that issue through. Um, I, I don't want to stand between you and, and morning tea, so uh, I think we might, just in, in trying to wrap this up, and I know we could go on and tease out a whole lot of things for quite a lot longer, but unfortunately we don't have the time. I mentioned at the outset, if we could sort of, uh, out of the, the comments that you've made and, and the issues that you've, you've touched on, what are the, the, the learning gaps? What are the, the information needs that we have in terms of priority? Can I start with you, Frank? What, what do you see as the number one uh, information need that we need in order to start to overcome the, the issues? Um, well, again, the, you know, I can only just say that the visa issue, I'm sorry, John, but um, if that's increased, I reckon we would triple the amount of tourism almost overnight if we had electronic visas for, uh, for the Chinese. And with the, the, you know, the standard of uh, economics in China today, there's no reason why that shouldn't be, the same as uh, Taiwan and other areas. Therese? From our perspective, it's understanding that this isn't a mass market, that there are very different markets within the big China market. We need to understand the experiences that those guests are looking for and do a match so that the experiences available in Queensland will meet those needs and we need to look at our quality standard. And, and could I, just before you pass over the microphone, uh, I, I think those differences are not only geographic as, they, uh, as the market moves beyond the major centres uh, currently supplying visitors as we get into secondary cities and, and tertiary cities and so on, but also as the market evolves, so you're still going to have an entry level but you're going to get right, right through to very sophisticated and, and mature travellers, aren't you? Absolutely. So there's that whole uh, becomes even more complex. Absolutely. Okay. Don? Yeah, just um, possibly flowing through, but at the same time as um, educating the industry, but also educating the frontline staff, because that's going to be probably the only point of contact that a lot of these groups, if we use other international markets as an example, have any contact with many Australians. So... We need to make sure the frontline staff understand these cultural nuances as well as the sort of mid to senior management. Um, and that probably needs to be going on at the very same time as uh, rather than, well, let's get the industry out and then move on. 
Adele? I think once we have a better understanding of our key competitors in the different sophisticated segments, we'll have a better direction in terms of what the key priorities are. I, I think we're, you know, I, I'll, I'll repeat myself and say, you know, Australia had the first mover advantage and we need to stand back now and have a look and, and see who the new aggressive competitors are out there and make sure that we remain, despite the fact that we're not going to be uh, marketing to a homogeneous group, making sure that we still have that crystal clear image of what Australia is and having the detailed product information below that but not cannibalizing that clear idea. David. Yeah, I think from mine, you might have picked it up by now, I've, I've got a lot of different topics I could talk about. I think probably with the greatest due respect to all of our government agencies, because they do do, uh, I think, a very, very effective job. I haven't seen it in all the years, I've been travelling to China, which is probably before ADS, and I've pr probably been there 40 or 50 times. I've never seen uh, government as a whole get your biggest investors who are actively in China. There's probably 20, 25 companies in Australia that invest hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, hundreds of thousands of their own dollars a year, that are on the ground on a regular basis. China's one of those markets whereby what's relevant today may not necessarily be relevant in three months' time. And our frustration, or certainly mine as a supplier, is by the time reports sometimes do come out because they're so in-depth and intricate, that information's moving on. The, the Chinese are very proud of it, the saying they have, and it sim basically goes, um, if you have a policy, we have a solution. And that defeats any a lot of our frameworks that we try and put in in regulating our industry. The, the way to access that is to, with your senior management, your directors and your presidents and your CEOs who are running their companies with China as a major target. We've got a vested interest in the market. I would, I would, I would hazard a guess to say we have very good real-time access information. I think the challenge is, is for the federal and state governments to embrace that information as well. Use your suppliers, your key guys, more than what's currently happening in a, in a unified, unified approach to the market. Because, as we know, there's 139, 140 ADS companies or countries out there now. There's a little one called America. There's Europe. There's a lot of competition. And if we're not smart and work together, um, I think uh, we could probably miss some great opportunities. OK. Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned at the outset that uh, this was basically the start of a, a, a dialogue that we want to involve you all in as the day progresses, uh, of just not only identifying the issues, but the, the, the learning and information gaps. For helping us start that, can you please thank Frank, Therese, Don, uh, Adele and David.